three years ago, I was sitting in my dorm, bored out of my mind. So I decided to start a company. My first client was the NFL, and after sending over 100,000 cold emails in the past three years, I've gotten responses from Mark Cuban, Sheryl Sandberg, and Ariana Huffington. But let me rewind. I'm full of dumb ideas. Most kids spend their summers going to the beach, going to the mall, and playing sports. When I was a kid, I would invite my friends over to play. When they'd ask what I wanted to do, I would say, let's start a business. I was super fun to hang out with. <laughs> when I was seven years old, instead of doing the typical lemonade stand, my friends and I decided to do a rock stand. We found rocks in the yard, put them in water because we thought they looked cooler, and set up a table. I think we made a total of 25 cents. When I was 16, I started a talent management company that was focused on influencers in the entertainment space, which included YouTubers and musicians. And that lasted for about a month. But for that month, I was legitimately convinced that I was going to be the next Scooter Braun who discovered Justin Bieber. At the time, I couldn't understand why I kept failing. I didn't know that nobody wants to pay for rocks. And I didn't know that everything is built on relationships, especially the entertainment industry, and I didn't know anyone. So, when I was 18, I decided to send hundreds of cold emails a day to some of the most incredible people in the world. I figured that by talking to as many brilliant people as I could, I'd shorten my learning curve so I could get where I wanted to go quicker. What I found is that cold emails can create meaningful connections. My parents are not entrepreneurs. I did not have a network of supporters for my rock stand. My only my only customer was one neighbor who felt bad for us. Around the same time that I was starting my entertainment empire, I watched Kat Cole on the TV show Undercover Boss. At the time, she was the president of Cinnabon, and I remember thinking that she was badass. I spent the rest of that night learning everything I possibly could about her. Fast forward five years later, I still thought the cat would be an amazing person to learn from. I reached out, asking if there was anything I could do to help her. There wasn't. So I followed up with Kat almost every month for the next year and a half, about 18 more times. Meanwhile, Kat had become the president and chief operating officer of Focus Brands, which is the parent company of Cinnabon. Finally, two years after that initial email, Kat invited me to speak at Focus Brands. <laughs> Today, I'm going to tell you how cold emails can get a response create connection, and convince potential clients. Three years ago, in the middle of the what do I want to do with my life crisis, a few things happened. First, as I was watching a car commercial, I started thinking about how companies were marketing to young people and how, for the most part, they aren't doing it in a way that appeals to most of us. Second, I realized that I'm not a millennial, but instead part of this entirely different generation that people are just starting to talk about now called Generation Z. And third, I read a Forbes article about a 17-year-old named Connor who was running a company that was helping brands better connect and engage with our generation. I thought what Connor was doing was super interesting, so I sent him what was probably the worst cold email I've ever sent. And that's saying a lot, considering I've been emailing people since I was 14. It was so long, and I referred to him in third person because I didn't know he checked his own emails. For whatever reason, he actually responded, and a few days later, we had one of the most awkward conversations I've ever had. A meaningful relationship didn't develop until a few months later when I asked him if there was anything I could do to help. That one cold email has set the trajectory for how I operate my life on a day-to-day -day basis and for the rest of my career. When sending cold emails, people are more likely, likely to respond if we can add value up front. Chris Saka, who is a billionaire from investing in companies like Uber and Kickstarter, gave me the example of pointing out a typo on someone's blog or recommending a candidate for a job they're hiring for. Don't ask busy people to grab a coffee so you can pick their brain and then ask if they'll commit to being your lifelong mentor. Those cold emails get ignored. I'm a 21-year-old who thought selling rocks instead of lemonade was a good idea, so if this works for me, it can certainly work for you. I mean, for this talk, I had no idea how to start. The first thing I thought of was to ask people who have given great talks, so I cold emailed Mark Cuban, Ben Horowitz, and Beth Comstock, and I asked them a very simple question. How do you give a really good talk? And what do you know? They actually got back to me. 
And that's how I found out that sending unsolicited emails to people who have absolutely no idea who I am is just about the only thing I'm good at. Mark Cuban, who is one of the sharks on Shark Tank, said to relax and tell my personal story. Ben Horowitz is one of the founders of Andreessen Horowitz, a venture capital firm that has invested in companies like Facebook and Pinterest. He said the three keys to a great presentation are a compelling opening, a strong ending, and keeping the two as close together as possible. Beth Comstock, who was the vice chair of General Electric, said to get out of my head and be present. I even emailed the richest man in the world who founded Amazon and anxiously awaited a response. And honestly, I didn't think he'd respond. So when I saw the name Jeff pop up in my inbox, I was in disbelief he had actually responded. When I opened it, it said, I hope you don't mind me responding on behalf of Jeff. <laughs> Last year, I emailed Chipotle. I used to go through executives, CEOs, CMOs, and COOs, but what I've learned is that these people are receiving hundreds of cold emails a day. Instead, I emailed the vice president and had an initial conversation with someone on their team. He said that he was only in the Newport offices for a couple days every few months, but mentioned he was going to be there the following month. I booked my flight that same day. I flew down to Newport in the morning, back to the Bay Area in the evening, and closed him as a client a few weeks later. For the past few years, I've tried to live by this idea of the third door, which is from a book. It's the idea... It's the idea that life, business, and success are like a nightclub. There's three ways in. The first door is the main entrance where the line curves around the block and where 99% of people wait, hoping to get in. The second door is the VIP entrance where billionaires and celebrities slip through. The third door is the entrance where you have to jump out of line, run down the alley, and sneak through the kitchen. There's always a way. And I've always loved football. The first job I ever wanted was to become a professional football player before I realized that wouldn't be possible for me for a variety of reasons. <laughs> now, instead of wanting to play for an NFL team, my goal is to buy the Chargers. In 2018, I decided to email the chief marketing officer of the NFL. She said thank you so much for reaching out, but that they already had an 18-year-old working with them on a similar initiative. Little did she know, I had actually cold emailed him about a month earlier and had a conversation. So I was able to mention that I knew him and that I thought I could add a unique angle as a female. About a month later, I was sitting in the NFL boardroom. As I was emailing people asking for advice on giving this talk, Martin Levine, who's the chief operating officer of Instagram, explained the rookie advantage. It's the fact that rookies tend to fear failure less than established counterparts and it's being unconstrained by notions of what's possible. The NFL was my first client, and they were my dream client. I didn't know I was supposed to start small like other entrepreneurs. I was a rookie, hoping the thousands of cold emails I had sent would give me an advantage. They did. I'm still full of dumb ideas, and I'm still super fun to hang out with. <laughs> what I've learned is that some of these ideas are crazy enough to actually work. As a seven-year-old, my friends and I made 25 cents selling rocks. Earlier this year, I made over $10,000 in 48 hours for my consulting services. That project came from a cold email as well. Dumb ideas can actually be a smart move with the right strategy. But cold emails aren't just for sales or business. They can be used for getting advice, building relationships, or finding a job. So if you don't want to be an entrepreneur, you can use cold emails to reach out to people in the field you're interested in. Here's a format that I found to be successful. Start with their name. Then use the line, I know that you're really busy and get a lot of emails, so this will only take 60 seconds to read. Next, use one or two lines to establish who you are and show credibility. And if you're saying to yourself, I have absolutely no credibility like I was a few years ago, talk about the rock stand you ran when you were seven years old. But tailor to the person or company that you're emailing. For example, when I emailed Connor, I talked, about how, I talked about how the background I had with influencers gave me an advantage in understanding this generation. Then, ask a very specific question, and end with the line, I totally understand if you're too busy to respond, but even a one or two line reply would really make my day. And if you still don't believe that this can work, I'm one step ahead of you. I want to introduce you to Ava. 
Ava's a junior communications major. She's done an internship with a local sports radio station and works for the university's athletic department. She has a 3.8 GPA and wants to work for an NFL team. Except Ava isn't a real person. I made Ava up just for this talk. About a week ago, I created a fake profile, fake email address, and sent 50 emails to people who work for an NFL team. I came up with a marketing idea as a way to add value and use my job, internship, and GPA as credibility. Out of the 50 emails, 20 responded. Some connected Ava to their HR department or suggested submitting a resume. Others said to stay in touch, and the CEO of one team even said to let him know if she was ever in their city. That's 20 people to start to build a relationship with and ask for advice. And older people love when a rookie asks for their advice. The pressure to be perfect is real, and so many of us are afraid to try. If we don't think we can get an A, we don't take a class. If we don't think we can get into a college, we don't apply. And if we don't know what to say in an email, we don't write it. Through cold emails, we can create opportunities. And when we get out of our comfort zone, when we use the third door, and when we're not afraid to try, we grow. And if you don't know where to start, thank you.